Okay, I got a new video today, and uh, today I want to talk about once you're saved and know that you are saved. Uh, we know about eternal security, and eternal security is a fact. Once you're saved, you cannot lose your salvation, and that's what the Bible teaches. That's true. Because if you could lose your salvation, we're still humans. Whether we're saved or not, we're Christians. We still sin, sadly. And uh, if you could lose your salvation, everyone would have. And that's it's, it's comforting to know that the Lord is like, no, once you're saved, you're one of mine. Now, you can lose inheritances, meaning that you can, um, you know, you can live in the world and be a Christian and, and be, you know, and just live very badly. You will lose rewards in heaven, but you won't lose your salvation and, uh, and stuff. So today I want to talk about, uh, just uh, trying to get it right, like explain it correctly. Because the salvation is so simple, but still a lot of people aren't really getting it and, and stuff. And it, it, it's, it's, it's understandable. Because it's not taught in their church. And I, you know, went to church, you know, since I was a child and things like that. And I never heard this stuff. I had to learn from the Bible for myself to understand it and to learn it. And I actually took Bible classes and, and uh, learned how to read the Bible properly, rightly dividing things. So I learned how to do it and stuff. So that's why I want to teach others as well. But we have to understand and have the mindset. When you think about salvation, you've got to understand that you're trusting in something that someone else did. Now, trust, faith, believe are three words that mean the exact same thing in the Bible. Now, Jesus spilled his blood on the cross, as we know, because the, the Gospels, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1-4. through 4, We have to hear the Gospel, understand the Gospel, and believe the Gospel. Which it says in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 13. Ephesians 1.13 tells us, it tells us we have to hear the gospel and understand and then believe. It says right here, it says, one more page here. It says, in whom you also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and whom also after that you believed, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. You're sealed with the Holy Spirit the moment you hear the gospel, understand the gospel, and then believe the gospel. Then you're saved. Boom. Well, what's the gospel? You keep hearing the gospel, the gospel, the gospel, and no one ever explains to you. I know I mentioned some other videos on this channel. No one ever, ever explains what the gospel is. They use the word gospel. What's the gospel mean? Where is it in the Bible? Every single person I ever asked in my entire life, where's the gospel in the Bible? They don't know. I was a few months ago, I talked to some Mormon missionaries that stopped me at the gas station back in May or June. And I say, where's the gospel? And they said, Acts. And I'm like, really? But the, the Mormons don't use the gospel. They have a different way of salvation. It's really bad. But they were really nice kids and stuff. They were young guys. They were very kind and, and courteous. And I was very kind. It was just, uh, you know, they were nice kids. But I just pray that they get right and get out of that cult and just get right with the Lord. That would be wonderful. But we see it's all about the gospel. Well, the gospel, of course, is 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. And it tells us... How to be saved. It says, More of a brother, and I declare unto you the gospel which I preach unto you, which also you receive, and where you stand. Or which also you are saved, if you keep in memory of what I, what I preached unto you, unless you believed in vain. Something that you believe. We know that's the whole point I'm getting at today. You don't believe in or trust in anything, trust faith or believe in anything that you do. That's the whole point. Because the Bible just says, is if there's anything you trust in yourself, then you're not saved. You've got to trust solely in Christ. You need to surrender. It says, For I deliver you also, first of all, which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures. How did he die for our sins? He spilled his blood. And he paid for us and purchased us with his own blood. In verse 4, And that he was buried and he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Okay, the gospel of today tells us that we have to have faith in how Christ died. Well, how did he die for our sins? He spilled his blood. So we have to have faith in the blood atonement. Because there cannot be a forgiveness of sins without the shedding of blood. Hebrews 9.22 tells us that. And we have to have faith that Jesus died and for three days was dead and buried. And on the third day he rose again, resurrected. That's for our salvation. Trust in the blood. Trust that Jesus died and rose again the third day. For our salvation. This is the difference between heaven and hell. This is to see if you, this, this will make you rapture ready. Which is pretty amazing. Now, if we see real quick here, we do read in... Um, 1 Thessalonians 4.14, when you read it, says this, Paul tells us this, that we trust that he died and rose again the third day. It says, 
uh, 1 Thessalonians 4.14, For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Now that's in the in, uh, context of the rapture. And that's part of the gospel. We have to believe that Jesus died and rose again for our salvation. We also have to believe that Jesus spilled his blood for us. Believe, trust, faith, three words mean the same thing in the Bible. Now let's go into the blood and the importance of it. No one's talking about it. Look at here. Romans 3.25. It says, well, let's read 3.23 and 3.24 and 3.25. Let me get my glasses here. It says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Jesus redeemed us with His blood, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in His blood, to declare his righteousness through the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God, the forbearance, the, the uh, patience of God. It's through the faith in the blood. It says in verse uh, 28, Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. See, we're not under the law today for salvation. We're under grace today of what would, the grace is the act of what Jesus did for us. Let's look at Romans 5. Now, if you're someone who don't trust in the blood for the salvation, you can just take Romans 5 and throw it right in the trash because Romans 5 completely shows you the blood for salvation. It's so important to read Romans 5. Romans 5 says, Therefore, in being justified by faith, we have peace through God. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. God gave us peace. He forgave us through the blood that His Son, Jesus, spilled. For us, it's what Jesus did. What a precious, wonderful thing Jesus did for us. Romans 5, 9. Much more than being now justified by his blood. We shall be saved from wrath of him. What's the wrath? The wrath of hell. Wrath of hell. The definition of hell is the wrath of God. That wrath was removed when you, when you get washed in the blood. When, when, meaning your soul becomes cleansed and clean once you hear the gospel, understand the gospel, believe then the Holy Spirit enters the moment you get saved. Being justified. Justified is an interesting thing uh, that I, I've learned years ago. If you take the word justified and split it up, it says, just if I didn't do it. Justified means God has actually took your sins and forgotten them. And forgiven and forgotten them so much that in the eyes of God, you, you never sinned in the eyes of God. You have been righteously made by what Jesus did for you. It's all about what Jesus did. That's what we're getting to. But we have to see the importance of the blood and how the scriptures teach us. I don't want to tell you anything. I want the Bible to tell you everything. Now, here we go. It's read 90. Well, we'll just read 5 again. Being justified by faith. Faith, trust, belief, three words that mean the same thing. So, we're, so it's through faith only. And faith in what? Mine. Being more than being now justified by his blood. We're justified. We shall be saved from wrath through him. Saved from hell. Through Jesus Christ, because of what he paid. So, so far in Romans 5, uh, excuse me, yeah, Romans 5, so far we see we have to have faith in the blood for what? In verse 11. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. The atonement is another word for forgiveness. And you've got to see how, well, it's another word for sacrifice as well. The, uh, the sacrifice has been made. So how it just tell it just said, through faith in the blood, you have received atonement, forgiveness. That's what it says. And if you believe in anything else, then you're not following the Bible. I don't want to be mean or blunt or anything, but that's exactly what it says. Faith in that blood. Hebrews 9.22 tells us something to confirm it. It's really interesting. A lot of great stuff in Hebrews and stuff, too. If you read the book of Hebrews. You start finding out something real quick. There's a lot of blood mentioned in Hebrews. Hebrews 9.22, And almost all things are by the law purged with blood, and without the shedding of blood is no remission. I think it's also in uh, Hebrews 9.12 also. Let me see. 9.12, Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Eternal Redemption, eternal security is what it's telling us. 
So to be saved is what the gospel of today is telling us. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. It says how Christ died for our sins. Well, he spilled his blood. That's how he did it. He couldn't have done it any other way. And we trust that Jesus also died and rose again the third day. So we see through Romans 5 alone, it's through faith, trust, believe, three words that mean the same thing, only in the blood atonement, in the blood that Jesus spilled. And how do you, how do you know you're saved? Well, you then received the forgiveness through the faith in the blood that Jesus spilled, and we trust that Jesus died and then rose again the third day. That's it. Look anywhere in the Bible. For the Gentiles today, from books from Romans to Philemon, you tell me any different. Because the King James Bible is telling me that. Let's go have and have another little look here. If we look at Revelation, yeah, Revelation. Revelation chapter 1 tells us something really interesting. Really interesting. Revelation chapter 1, I believe it's verse 5. Get my glasses on again, half blind. Revelation uh, chapter 1, verse 5, it says, And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead. Yeah, he's the first begotten of the dead. He was the first one to rise from the dead. We're all going to rise soon, but he's the first one to do it. It says, And the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. It says, in his own blood. Amazing. Amazing. Look at Ephesians 1 7. Just love, love preaching about the blood atonement. What a wonderful, beautiful gift that Jesus gave us. Spilling his blood on the cross for our stupidity and our awful sins. He says, Nope, my, my plan is going to be fulfilled. And it was. Ephesians 1 7, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. The riches of his grace. Let's look at uh, first. Even Peter's talking about it. Look at First Peter, First um, uh, Peter one nineteen. First Peter one nineteen. Not just Paul saying it. Peter as well. One nineteen. It says, "We have also." Uh, it's a, a, oh, that's a good one too. That's Second Peter. First Peter. First Peter one nineteen says this. It says, but with the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish and without spot. Right there from the precious blood. Let's read 18. For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by traditions from your fathers, but by the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish and without spot. Blemish and spot, Jesus was sinless is what it's saying. Jesus was sinless. Uh, let's see. I do believe... Let's see, I do believe that John also mentions the blood. Let's see if I can find that real quick. Because John mentions the blood as well. In John 1.7, 1 John 1.7, it says, If we walk in the, in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. Washing us with his blood. The blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. Of course, cleanses, sanctified, washed away the sins from our soul is what happens. It's all this amazing spiritual thing that happened. So when it comes down to it, how do you know you're saved? Well, for one, you trust in the blood atonement. And you trust that Jesus died rose again the third day. I gave you many verses showing you this. But you have to get the mindset and understand that you're trusting in something for your salvation that some, someone else did. And that someone else just happened to be God himself. So you can rest easy knowing that, did I do enough to get saved? No, you didn't do anything. You can't do anything for salvation. It would make it of none effect. You, uh, faith, trust, and belief, three words that mean the same thing in the Bible. I know I keep saying that, but uh, it's really important to understand. But we have to trust in what Jesus did for us. He already did it. It's not like he's going to do it. He already did it. This things he's going to be doing coming up real soon. Well, we're just talking about for salvation. He's already done it almost 2,000 years ago. He spilled his blood already. He died and rose again already. He's not dead and buried in the ground and going to come back. He's already seated in heaven and seated right hand to the Father. He's already been in heaven. He was only down here for about 33 years plus three days. So we have to see we're trusting in something someone else did. We're trusting in what Jesus Christ did. His blood spilled. He was the one. Has there been a blood sacrifice made for your sins? There has to be. In order for you to be saved. 
And you don't make a blood sacrifice of an animal like they did in the Old Testament. You have faith in the blood that Jesus spilled for you that made a purchase of you by his blood. You, the faith in it is making the sacrifice. That's how the sacrifice is made. That's how God set it up for today. So yes, if you trust in the blood atonement Jesus spilled for your salvation, the, the payment was made by his blood, then you are trusting in his blood atonement. You, there has been a blood sacrifice made for your sins. And then you're rapture ready. Because if you trust in the blood, you're very well going to trust that he died and rose again the third day. Because he did. I'm just telling you the truth. Jesus would say verily, verily. Because verily, verily means truly, truly. I'm telling you the truth is what I'm saying. And Jesus is like, I'm always telling you the truth. Jesus said, you have mansions of gold in heaven. And if it were not so, I would tell you. Because Jesus was straight to the point. Sometimes Jesus spoke in parables and things, and, and that's fine. But once you understand the parable, you're like, well, that made perfect sense. It just it is what it is. But remember, you know you're saved because you're trusting in someone else. Trust nothing in what you do for salvation. You can't trust anything. I mean, you can't do anything for salvation. You will be a sinner. God doesn't want your, your sinful works. Yeah. He's not interested in that. Now, once you are saved, you, you get saved, you're washed in the blood, then you want to serve. But that service has nothing to do with salvation. It has to do with, you know, pleasing Jesus. It has to do with building up treasures in heaven. It's a judgment seat of Christ. But for now, uh, we, we, we serve once we're saved, but we trust in Jesus solely for our salvation. It's only what he did for salvation. Jesus already did it. Just trust in what he did. And I hope this video helps you. If you're not saved, get saved. I showed you the way of salvation today. It's all about what he said. I'm not telling you anything that I said. I'm showing you what the King James Bible says because I don't trust any other book of, of, of the Word of God through the Bible, but the King James Bible. Hope this helps you. And I do have a second channel. It's called Learning the Truth. It has a lot of YouTube shorts and a lot of uh, shorter videos and stuff like that. And uh, if you ever get the chance, check out my, also, my other channel called Learning the Truth. And I'll talk to you later.